in order to get your shoulder hand line vertically over your head, you must couple upward rotation of the scapula with movement at the glenohumeral joint. These are two movements that must happen together, but often don't. Now, if you break it up, if I'm get my arm up to 180 degrees, it's made up of around 60 degrees of upward scapular rotation and around 120 degrees of movement at the glenohumeral joint through uh, humeral elevation. And it sort of happens at like a sort of a two to one ratio. So even if somebody can pick up that first rib angle, does it mean that their shoulder complex is now ready to be loaded? No, we need to look at what's going on in the shoulder. And the way that we test that is we raise the arms up as high as you can go, both of them. Right, and firstly, I'm gonna look at how much upward scapular rotation she has. Now, a quick rule of thumb, like I showed you with the knee position in the lunge, is that you grab the scapula and you follow it down and you get to the inferior angle of the scapula. So is everyone happy with what the inferior angle is? Yeah. All right, and it should lay in the midpoint of the shoulder. If it's sitting back here, it means there is not enough upward scapular rotation. If there's not enough upward scapular rotation, you're going to compromise loading at the shoulder. Arms down, and here's why. My hand represents her glenoid, and this is like the, the scapula. What sits in the glenoid? The head of the humerus. Now, as she rotates, lifts her arm up, the scapula needs to rotate up 60 degrees, so now the cut part, or the, the convex part of the joint, is sitting directly under the humeral head, so now compressive loading is going to pass down directly through the scapula and it's going to be a very structurally stable position for that shoulder complex to be loaded. If it doesn't rotate all the way up, it's going to be facing down a little bit and now the humeral head is going to be going down and shearing down and traumatising the passive structures in the shoulder. So we must qualify scapular position. Once we've done that, we can go right, so she's got good 60 degrees up in rotation, I now got to go, what about the glenohumeral joint? How much movement must take place there? 100, about 120 degrees. So we do a simple little test which is called the subacromial impingement sign, which means even if they have good thoracic extension, even if they have 60 degrees of upward scapular rotation, it does not mean <coughs> we can load them overhead yet because we've got to look at what's happening at the glenohumeral joint. And we ask the person to just put their hand on their shoulder like this, all right, if that's 90, they should be able to lift their elbow up to about 120 without getting any pain in the shoulder. Now I want you all to stand up and feel that.